So after its shameful and undoubtedly lemon-like performance in its overview and review video, we're going to take the Nerf Mega Lightning Bow and make a mod guide for it, which should hopefully reveal it to have at least some resemblance of power and performance and potential. Take that alliteration, and we can find out what the failure was as soon as we crack this shell open. I have a sneaking suspicion as to what it is, but I'm going to wait before I call my shot. So upon removing all of the Lightning Bow's same size Phillips head screws, you can get inside the blaster and you see immediate disappointment. This is neat that it's one panel and can be painted all by itself, but other than that we are presented with internals which are strikingly jolt-like. This is essentially a big shock which has an extended plunger so it should have more power but it does not have a catch which means that it has no snappy release for its potential energy which means that it's terrible. It is in no way worth its MSRP. This is just a bad blaster dressed up in a fancy shell. Now with that in mind, I'm perfectly comfortable leaving my original review for this up, but we should also be able to find out what went wrong, and it looks like this string just popped whatever it is is holding it in place, so this is of course the meat and potatoes of the blaster itself. In fact, this might, nope, that is solvent welded into place. This pops off, and what was holding this to the plunger? That is the question, so... String was being held onto the plunger by just being knotted up and shoved in here, and it looks like that piece on mine was faulty in some way and cracked, and so now it is shot. Um, I don't know why they didn't run this through and knot it on the actual plunger head. That might be how I end up fixing the blaster, but just what an absolutely terrible design, what a waste of a perfectly decent spring, and what an awful rehashing of the Jolt concept. I'm really, really tired of these new blasters, which are essentially just reshelled Jolts, and this is no exception. If anything, this is a huge step backwards as they remove the super cool catch mechanism from the Jolt itself. So I'm disappointed. I completely understand why this blaster is no longer functional, and frankly, I will finish the mod guide, but I'm not happy about doing so because I will never use this blaster in a war type setting. But if you have this blaster, if you are excited to use it, I would recommend coming through, making sure that this is very secure. You could do a spring addition of some sort to get more power out of it. And then of course, I would knock out this air restrictor as a single barrel. There is no advantage to having an AR in this system. So I'm going to get to work on doing all of that. But Really just a lackluster blaster for the price point, and I can't recommend anybody purchase it for really any reason. So for those brave enough to try this, I do want to point out my methods. I have blown out this white piece from the plunger head. I did that by tapping it out from the back end, which was very easy by my shattered orange plastic. Then I'm going to thread this through, knot it a whole bunch of times, and then add an epoxy of some sort to really lock it into place. Before I do any of that, I'm going to have to thread the pieces on as they will go into the blaster. So that spring, uh, or it's plunger cap, I guess, back end cap, then spring, then this, then tie off. And now I also want to touch briefly on how I'm going to be knocking this out cleanly. I'm coming in with some rotary pipe cutters and I'm teasing this back white cap off. I've no doubt that it's solvent welded on in a similar fashion. So I'm going to take it off gently so that I can two part epoxy it back into place when I'm done. But after I've done that, I'm going to blow the entire apparatus and air restrictor out through the back end and I think that that'll give us clean air delivery all the way through and should be an ultimately much better system. I just want to be perfectly clear that this is what it should look like when your air is flowing freely through the system. Obviously this cap needs to be replaced and then there will be two part epoxy applied over that probably from the inside to kill a little bit of that dead space there but this is what it should look like I will go ahead and start assembling the new string plunger and then it should be more or less ready to reassemble so two part epoxy the cap back on all the way around just a thorough coating so that that is super duper solid and then I came in and gave the same treatment to this. 
I of course re-knotted it with a screw tied into the knot so that it had a larger outer diameter on that knot, then pulled that all the way through and gave that a generous coating of two-part epoxy. So everything should be pretty solid at this point and ready to reassemble. This will of course need some sort of re-greasing, but with the amount of travel that it has in the plunger tube, I will not be adding any Teflon tape to this system as I want it to still travel somewhat freely. I think that that'll be ideal. There might in fact be too much two-part epoxy in this system just because this is a moving weighted part and it should be as lightweight as possible and I have added epoxy to the detriment of that but I think it'll be okay this plaster was not performing super duper well in the first place and it was in fact non-functional so at the very least it'll be working now whether or not it will be good is something we will determine once we reassemble it. So one final thing that had to be implemented was some sort of draw extension so that this would perform more like a bow and actually fire using the entirety of the travel of the plunger tube. And to do that I moved this piece here which had a knot in it and this kind of cuff or collar up here from where it was here, I undid the knot, I redid the collar at the very end, melted a, about a centimeter of the, the nylon here into a dot so that it can no longer escape, and then melted a channel at the bottom. So I moved from here to here, giving us an effective extra inch and a half, and I got that length by undoing the knot that had been done at the factory. So this now sits in this slot here. This will go back on top like so to hold it into place and this should finally perform well. One downside of this is by extending this down this no longer makes a ton of sense as it is down here. I could probably have moved this by undoing this knot and moving it up but I didn't think about that before locking this down and this is now very very permanent. So it's now going to draw from here. This is semi ridiculous. I could remove this entirely and I might just do so. So it'll be slightly less comfortable but it will now in fact perform properly. Alright so this is the finished mod guide segment for the Mega Lightning Bow. I went ahead and painted this red. I like the red contrast with the metallic more. It also kind of helps the bow stand out as something that's been modified as opposed to stock. So of course with this relocation up here you still pull but it has a little bit more draw to it now. I did go ahead and remove the orange bit. I didn't like it being all the way down here. It made it look spectacularly out of place. Now it just looks like there's a knot in the wrong place. So pulling and firing. There isn't really a click to let you know when you've gotten to where you need to be which is kind of disappointing. So I just kind of guesstimate and then you can see that we're getting nowhere close to regular mega style performance. That was a pretty good shot but compared to the lightning bow which you don't have to worry about this is just subpar. I'm kind of holding it like at a very strange angle. I don't know why. I guess I'm hardwired from archery to want to draw like this at an angle so that my arrow is in the knock but this doesn't require that so I guess you could line up a very straight shot through the the targeting reticle which is so tactical. I really don't like that this isn't symmetrical that we're not pulling the plunger from a dual cam system instead there's just one down here and so when you go to draw it's awkward because you pull up there's just a lot wrong with this blaster I have no idea how it got through R&D so drawing is not a straight thing it's an up like this but if we move our arms in a kind of contortionist fashion we can fire that way and then we'll do the fifth shot so ranges modified are certainly better than ranges stock and e I would say very close to elite style ranges. That was about a 65 foot shot there. Now they're remarkably inconsistent. The way that you have to hold and prime and release the blaster means that shots are inconsistent. Aiming is virtually impossible and the bow does much less. It's just, it's a worse big shock and a much larger shell with a ton of unnecessary pieces and no catch. I cannot recommend you purchasing this blaster for any reason. That said, I am selling my modified one on eBay. Now I know that that seems a little bit hypocritical, but I never want to see this thing again And so I'm gonna put it on eBay for 99 cents if you would like it you are welcome to have it and If not, I'll throw it in with my usual holiday uh, Charity donations and hopefully somebody will get some pleasure out of it now that it is at least Functional but big shock better than this in every way easier to modify more compact better more consistent performance The lightning bow with its mod guide complete is a serviceable sidearm. It definitely works It's just not something that I would ever uh, be excited to grab out of the loaner bin I don't think that this is a blaster for me. I'm very curious who the blaster 
Gears 4 with its giant handle and poor performance, but I, I'm not going to spend any more time worrying, frustrating, or thinking about it. So that's the mod guide. Hopefully you enjoyed getting to take a look at the internal, see why it's not a very good blaster instead of just me saying it broke, this is bad. But that's the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments on this video, I'd be very excited to get feedback. I don't make a lot of videos on negative blasters just because most blasters are solid and at least have some purpose for some game type somewhere. I usually try and find the silver lining in blasters. My reviews are very honest, but I can find a reason to love something. This is, this is the exception to that. I can't think of a scenario where I'd want this blaster. So if you can, let me know.